What's up guys? We are back with another NECA Toys Predator review and honestly I do not have any idea when I was able to say that last. It's been a while since any kind of Predator stuff has come out. I can't even begin to imagine what the last thing was. Probably a Lost Tribe figure. Uh, but I'm really excited to take a look at this new Predator because it takes us back to the video games and goes alongside the Scarface Predator. So we're taking a look today at the Predator Concrete Jungle Deluxe Stoneheart Predator. So this is an oversized figure. Uh, it's built on that Assassin Predator body. It's a little bit of a retool, reuse of that. So it's got a lot of size. So we're kind of back with a bang almost. It comes in a big old box because of how big this thing is but we've got an ultimate style package here and we've got some really fantastic artwork of the Stoneheart on the front fighting some Xenomorphs. Uh, you've got your Predator Concrete Jungle logo on the spines and then the back of the box gives us a bio for this particular Predator as well as a bunch of cool product shots showcasing uh, what all he's got. Now, in typical fashion, it's got the flap, so pop that open. You've got a big shot of the figure there on the inside and then you've got your figure there in the big window. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our NECA Stoneheart Predator. One, again, that I've really been looking forward to for a number of reasons, really. It's not just because it's the first Predator that I've gotten my hands on in I don't know how long, but it's also taken us back to the video games, and it's also a big old figure. Like, this is a big, monstrous figure. It's, of course, reminiscent of the Assassin Predator that we got whenever that came out, because there is definitely some part sharing here. So it's one of the largest Predators that NECA has made. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's still very normal. Like, there's really not any surprises here. So we've got a head uh, that can look up. He can look down really, really nicely. Like, you know, get that intimidating pose where he's looking down on something smaller. You've got tilt side to side. You do have rotation. Uh, so you've got to watch the angle on that because of course the head's gonna rotate weird because he's sort of jutting forward. Arms out at the shoulders, and I will say this is a really, really smooth, smooth joint. Uh, I was kind of concerned how clunky this guy might be, but he feels really nice. Of course, you can swivel all the way around. We do have tubing that runs to the back, but it does not really get in the way of anything. Elbows are double jointed. They go about that far. It's mostly because he has that giant gauntlet on that it sort of impedes mo motion, but it's really not that bad. They are kind of wonky looking because they have that, it's that telltale NECA joint and he has this jutting out tube. So it looks funny, but it's sort of okay because of what the idea is here, I think. You got your normal hinges and rotation at the wrist. The hinge is a little limited because of the spikes on the top of the hand. They just sort of get in the way. Torso, he's got a nice diaphragm cut. He goes forward and backwards. I've found that I've had to work at this joint to really get it moving, so, you know, your mileage may vary on that. The waist does not offer a great deal. It's more of like a little shimmy point, but you can get him to sort of lean forward really, really nicely. That, that diaphragm cut has a lot, a lot of clearance. So there's good movement there. The hips are nicely ratcheted, and you're going to hear it. So he's, he's pretty sturdy. Kick forward really nicely backwards. There is a thigh twist up here. I had to work to get that free, but I didn't didn't need to heat him. I just had to work at it. Legs, knees rather, are double jointed. They go back about that far. It's not the greatest, but for such big, big legs, I'm not surprised at the range there. They work okay. What I'm most happy about is the feet, though. So that Assassin Predator, you know, that this is very much, I'm going to compare it to that in terms of just overall figure design. That thing stood on its toes and balancing was not fun. This guy has a normal ratcheted disc hinge. So you've got rocker down here and it's okay. It's not the greatest, but it's better than your normal like ball jointed predator ankles. And you've got ratcheted hinge. So they're not the greatest. They don't have the hugest range because of the shin guards, but just the stability for this figure is it's kind of a game changer for me because he is, I mean, he's enormous. He's huge, but he's still very normal Predator. Like, there's not a whole lot that's surprising here. If you've messed with one Ultimate Style Predator, you know, within the past couple years, you basically know what to expect here. The only real difference is that, you know, this guy is huge. Now, where this guy is most impressive, of course, you know, it's, it's not a surprise what I'm going to hone in on for this figure. It's the visuals. It's the aesthetics, the design, and, of course, it's the size. 
This is a big, big figure, and there's no way around it. He's huge, and he is going to tower over the majority of your NECA stuff, and specifically anything actual 112. Uh, he's, he's a big boy. There is, however, just a lot more going on. And, you know, again, to compare to the The Predator, Assassin Predator, that guy was a really cool figure. It's a really cool design just to have that hulking, tall, monstrous Predator, but he had nothing on him. He was straight up just flesh. This guy has been fully, you know, cyborged out because that's the whole point of this. You know, he's had his, he's had his Predlocks uh, carved off. He's been covered in all these tubings. He's got the gauntlets, and this figure has lights. And I want to talk about the lights now. So he's got two sets of lights. He's got them in the head, and he, he has them in the body. So you pop that off, you pop this piece off on the back, and then you can turn those on. And I cannot stress enough just how bright these are. Make sure we got that. There we go. These are super, super bright lights. And I mean, even under my very, very bright lights that I've got on him, you can easily see these. And without the covers on him, they're almost like kind of blinding. This, uh, the lights in the head in particular are incredibly bright. And I just really like this. It, it adds an entirely different level of depth and just fun to this figure. Because without this, you just have these weird little translucent pieces on him. And I think they just did a really, really nice job. You know, I'm always worried about figures that have lights you know, even the, the sort of turbines on the back uh, do this also. I'm always kind of worried about this stuff because inevitably I'm going to forget about these batteries. And then they're going to corrode, but, you know, for the time being, these are a lot of fun. And I really, really like the way they did this. I like the fact that it's two separate sets. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not going to enjoy it if I have to replace them because that's a lot of batteries. But they really, really ramp up the... just the cool factor of this. I mean, it's always fun when a figure has lights. And then to add them onto this monstrous figure with all of this sort of just detail. He's covered in detail, just like the Assassin Predator was. You know, he's covered in all of this sort of nasty, really sort of craggy skin with little pock marks and scars all over him. But Stoneheart is an entirely different situation because he has all this stuff shoved into his body. So he's got all this scarification all over his chest. We've got all the tubing in the back. So all this stuff that juts out of this new torso piece looks great. These tubes do not get in the way of anything. Uh, they aren't really bendy or anything, but they have enough pliability to really just pose. They don't, they don't stop him from doing anything, which I really like. They aren't a hindrance at all. They just happen to look cool. You know, we've got the gauntlets here. We've got the big spike uh, claws on the top of the hands. And these just add more depth and bulk and nastiness and meanness to this guy. He's got his techno undies here. I wish this lit up to kind of go along with everything else, but I imagine that's just, that's probably too much, especially with the division of parts. So I'm okay with that. They've got a nice bright blue. And then you've got more of that down here with the armored shin guards, more of what would probably be lights on this guy as well. And then again, our normal feet. And I can't stress enough just the quality of life improvement that is to not have this figure, you know, a big figure being up on its toes because that assassin predator was really, really hard to pose or at least get to stand for prolonged periods of time. This guy does have great balance, and those flat feet really do help. And then, of course, we have our head sculpt up here, which, I mean, he just looks gnarly. He has removable mandibles, so there is a slightly unfortunate seam there, but it's not too bad unless you're really up on it. I love the, the idea of, the, you know, like the brain box coming out here, the lights, the translucent pieces, the pred locks being carved off, just to sort of sever any, any ties to, to what he is. I think that the expression on the face, he's got these sort of like really lost pupils almost. Like his eyes are super dilated, like they are uh, just sort of pins back there. So he doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he's sort of crazed and he's got a really evil, nasty expression on his face. I'm very, very, very happy with the way this guy turned out. Not just because he's huge, but because there is so much detail, tons of paint, all these new parts all over him, the lights. He's a complete package from top to bottom when it comes to just getting a really cool looking Predator figure. Of course, we have to do some size comparison, so we've got some bigger figures to start with. Here is the Ultimate Shaman Predator on the left to give you an idea of what he looks like with another Predator. And you can see, I mean, he absolutely towers over him. A Mythic Legions, which of course is not generally regarded as a small line of figures, and he barely comes up to the top of the undies. Now let's move this guy aside. And here is a Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure. So there's the controller, and he's obviously not the biggest Baff out there, but he's, he's not a small figure. 
Let's move the shaman aside, and here is definitely a smaller figure. So there is Toon Leo, and he doesn't even come up. He's about right at the crotch level. And let's move the controller aside, and how about a normal 1 12th style figure? There's a Cobra Trooper from Classified. And then one more, different line, definitely a different scale, because these kind of are their own thing. There is Ultimate's Optimus Prime, and he is definitely not a small figure, and he doesn't even come up to the shoulder. So this guy is massive. He is very big. He has a ton of size. He's going to have, well, to put it bluntly, he's going to have an absolute ton of shelf presence. Now, as far as accessories goes, there's not a lot in this package, but that's to be expected for this particular Predator. He really doesn't have a whole lot of stuff, so you get kind of everything you need. To start with, we do get some replacement mandibles, which I think this is pretty uncommon. You know, I, I can't remember. I don't remember getting a lot of replacement mandibles in this line. So you pop the actual closed ones out of the side of his head and you have the open one. So instead of getting an extra head sculpt, because of course there are lights in there, that would make this thing even more expensive. Uh, they swapped out that for removable mandibles. And you can see you've got the fully open ones and it reveals another point of articulation because the jaw actually moves once you've got those closed mandibles out of the way. So it actually looks correct. You know, when that is, those mandibles are open, they are generally screaming or, you know, gesturing somehow. So you've got that there and it's, it's pretty nice. Everything looks sort of wet and sort of goopy in there, which makes perfect sense. So you've got two display options for the same head sculpt. We do get some extra hands. So he's got the, the gesturing style posey kind of hands with the blades covering the fingers. We get fists that now allow those claw blades to sort of extend beyond the knuckles and actually be more actual, you know, like weapons, really. So you've got those. Those are the only hands we get. And then we do get the gauntlet blades here. So you get four of these. I've got two of them in right now. And they just uh, key into a couple channels on the inside of those gauntlets. And then you've got these massive, massive blades that he can use on one hand, both hands, neither hands if you don't want to use them. So you've got options to display those. Nice metallic paint. They look really good. Super shiny. I really like this mandible situation, though. Uh, rather than dealing with swapping heads, you just pop those mandibles out, put the new ones in, and you're good to go. So not a ton of stuff, but it's all pretty solid. And again, for this particular Predator, it's very much in line with kind of what he should have. So yeah, overall, super, super happy with this figure. Very happy that this is the first Predator I've gotten in a while because it's it's definitely rejuvenated my interest in Predator stuff. You know, it has been a bit. And to get this guy as kind of the first one back is, is pretty exciting because it's just good. Like, it's just a good figure. Articulation is great. He moves really well. I didn't have to heat up anything on this figure. He's got ratchets where he needs them. He's enormous. He has lights. Tons and tons of detail just dripping out of this figure. Great paint job. Overall cool design. And, I mean... It's Predator stuff, so I'm already excited, I'm already interested, but to get such a hulking, massive figure to take us back a little bit to a different part of the Predator universe we haven't visited in a while has been pretty exciting. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Stoneheart Predator. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.